The Chichulub Crater is where an asteroid hit Earth and wiped out the dinosaurs. The crater is an impact crater buried underneath the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Its center is offshore near the community of Chichulub, after which it's named. It was formed slightly over 66 million years ago when a large asteroid struck Earth about 10 kilometers in diameter. The full story befuddles scientists who thought they knew what happened. Yes, experts have dug deep into the massive cavity and realized what happened when that space rock hit Earth. Billion year wait between Mars and Jupiter orbited a city-sized rock, Earth forming. Evolved, the space rock drifted, toppling like a football. Celestial mechanics fired the nine mile wide projectile, Earthbound. A 66 million year old asteroid escaped. A T Rex may have noticed a strange new star growing brighter than the sun in the dinosaur's last days. The asteroid hit the Gulf of Mexico and was higher than 747. It dug a 20 mile deep hole and created mantle faults two minutes of liquid land. The asteroid's crater quickly filled with peaks. 12 magnitude earthquakes struck. Falls 600 mile per hour winds blew through North America. Vegetation vaporized. In an hour, Texas and Florida got 300 foot waves. A debris plume created regional infernos above Earth's atmosphere. Hell's opening salvo. Accidentally, the asteroid hit a sulfur-rich sea. Chemicals vaporized into a climate-altering blanket and acid rain, stopping photosynthesis. Wildfires turned dying plants into global soot. Most remaining creatures froze or starved from plankton to dinosaurs. Land only 55-pound animals survived. The most damaging was sulfur and dust. Imperial College London's Joanna Morgan studies the disaster. 75% of life ended the 180 million year dinosaur reign. Not easily. Ash survivors repopulated Earth. Mammals flourished without dinosaurs. Now scientists are investigating the crime scene. Liquid limestone shelf? Who made peak ring rocks? Which species returned first? Researchers are digging into the Cretaceous era to solve decades-old controversies. Evolution was altered if researchers find the first species to recolonize the crater. We'll learn about the dinosaur's demise and how life survived similar events billions of years ago. Morgan boards an open-air basket off the Yucatan Peninsula. A crane operator lifts her so she can see the Gulf of Mexico. From here, the apocalypse and the coastline are invisible. Lift Boat Myrtle is a drill rig parked over Chichilub, the planet's best preserved large impact scar. The rig's platform rises above the waves to provide a stable base for the drill crew. Morgan will drill a mile to collect samples. 1994 began. Scientists linked the Chichilub crater three years earlier to Lewis and Walter Alvarez's theory that a space rock crash killed the dinosaurs. Caribbean clues found the missing crater. Texas found tsunami sand. Haiti discovered impact formed tektites. Mexican geologists eventually gave over Yucatan drill cores. Impact craters were found in shock ports. Scientists assumed it happened in open water. Chichilub's sulfur-rich environment was devastating. Overall, good. Most experts agreed that an asteroid killed the dinosaurs and landed in Mexico when Morgan got involved. The size of Chichilub was still debated. Some thought it was twice as big. Few scientists studied impacts at the time, and the asteroid's energy depended on the crater's diameter. Alan Hildebrand of the University of Calgary and Buck Sharpton of the Lunar and Planetary Institute in Houston argued. Morgan jokes, one said your parents weren't married based on voodoo physics. Gravitational and magnetic anomalies were buried by sediment. Seismologists saw the opportunity. Morgan began seismic testing in 1996. Her team towed a large air gun 
behind a research vessel to reveal the crater. Next year, she had Hildebrand and Sharpton co-author a nature paper showing the crater's length. Next, Morgan had bigger plans. She targeted Chichilu. Morgan asked the International Ocean Discovery Program to collect six two-mile-deep cores from the crater's center. Her proposal was shelved until she cut costs. Before considering Morgan's proposal, the IODP requested a 3D site survey. She partnered with UT Austin geophysicist Sean Gulick, who was studying the Gulf. Again, the researchers towed air guns behind their vessel, bouncing 35,000 sound waves across 115 land and sea floor seismometers. By 2005, they had enough seismic data to determine Chichalubes' shape. Fossils from New Mexico and Colorado suggest an asteroid destroyed forests 66 million years ago. Some scientists thought the superheated atmosphere caused fireballs to rain down from the sky. David Kring of the Lunar and Planetary Institute modeled Chichalubes' aftermath. His team believes a 36,000 degree Fahrenheit thermal pulse sparked the fire. If so, southern North American fires didn't reach the north. Fallout caused global fires. Kring says many ecosystems existed then. Joanna Morgan of Imperial College London and colleagues tested pine needles. Thermal pulses couldn't start canopy replacing fires, the team found. Dry leaves sparked wildfires. Reduced sunlight and debris drying out Earth's plants, says Morgan. Dead plants burn. Earth ablaze. Soot indicates many fires, says Morgan. What regenerated forests? 2014 saw a population shift in fossilized North Dakota leaves. Evergreens outperformed deciduous plants. Flowering plants thrived while evergreens declined. After the impact, fern spores spiked, indicating some spores and seeds survived. Some avian dinosaurs lived, while others died. Current biology found that bird-like creatures at the end of the Cretaceous era had beaks without teeth, ideal for seeds. Carnivorous dinosaurs died with their food sources, but seed eaters survived. Underwater and sediment, the impact scar resembles the Schrodinger Crater on the moon. Peak rings surrounded both large craters. Only Chichilub has an intact peak ring on Earth. Despite the abundance of rings, scientists don't know how the inner circle forms or how land could weaken enough to behave like a liquid in the aftermath, as models predict. In addition to extinctions, life coming back, etc., there's a fundamental question. How are impacts made? Gulick, if you want to test models, we can get there without flying to the moon. The scientific community supported a new drilling effort after the 2005 seismic survey, but $20 million was too much. The recent drop in oil prices made a scaled-down version of this project feasible. Morgan, we're in a lucky window. Low oil prices and idle oil rigs help us. Morgan and Gulick have field experience. Morgan studies Santorini when not in Chichilu. Gulick's seismic studies have taken him from pole to pole, mapping fault and glaciers, and retrieving cores to reveal Earth's ancient climate. Co-chief scientists are ready for more on Myrtle's deck. Both wear red jumpsuits and blonde hair tucked under white hard hats. They have the Expedition 364 badge, a drill rig under a fireball. They laugh over rock cores that haven't seen sunlight since the asteroid's impact. Lift Boat Myrtle sinks its drill bit in April under Morgan and Gulick's leadership. By month's end, international experts and drill operators are reeling in 10-foot core sections in temperatures above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. As each rock cylinder comes up from the deep, onboard specialists record its density, resistivity, temperature, and any other data that might change before the cores are examined in Bremen, Germany. Most core layers are wafer thin, but some are several inches long and gray. Gulick says these are 50 million year old Mexican volcano ashes. Local cataclysms can't compare to the Cretaceous layer, 
Scientists predict the boundary layer will be hundreds of feet thick, consisting of peak ring materials, tsunami deposits, and melted rocks. In late May, they finished drilling at nearly a mile deep. The Cretaceous extinction event had a lesser impact on plants than it did on animals due to the fact that plant seeds and pollen are better able to withstand harsh conditions for longer. Flowering plants came to dominate the worm after the extinction of the dinosaurs, carrying on a trend that had begun in the Cretaceous period and which is still prevalent today. Flowering plants continue to hold this position. However, the extinction of all land animals weighing more than 25 kilograms occurred. What we're basically left with are the seeds of what we have today, she said. According to Paul, the lines that led to modern animals were able to make it through, despite the fact that many of the major animal groups that are still around today existed before the asteroid impact and that all of them experienced some level of extinction. The non-avian dinosaurs were the first to go extinct, but dinosaurs themselves lived on as birds. Some bird species did become extinct, but the lineages that eventually gave rise to modern birds were able to survive. In the beginning, the survivors were on the smaller side, and the birds were the first to evolve towards larger sizes. There were several families of enormous birds, both carnivorous and herbivorous. Still, they did not survive for very long and became extinct at the same time as the dinosaurs. The era known as the Oligocene Epoch didn't begin until about 15 million years after the extinction of dinosaurs that weren't birds. During this time, we first saw the appearance of truly massive mammals. At this point, animals of a size comparable to rhinos began to reappear. However, up until that point, the world was inhabited by a wide variety of small animals. This is especially true when compared to the dinosaurs who came before them. It took some time for the body size to catch up to the head size. Dinosaurs continue to hold the record for being the largest land animals that have ever lived. Whales are the only known animals to have ever grown larger than they are today. Were dinosaurs already doomed? Most scientists agreed that an asteroid 66 million years ago wiped out most life. But before the impact, were dinosaurs dying? Long, simmering debate erupted in 2016. In April, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences examined hundreds of dinosaur species on the evolutionary tree. Researchers found decline in many species by analyzing extinction and speciation statistics. Sauropods, like Brontosaurus, may have started dying off 50 million years before Chichalu. More species died 40 million years before the impact than evolved. What killed them? This statistical approach can't pinpoint a cause. Still, the team suggests several. Continental drift, volcanism, climate change, and sea level rise. Critics say the fossil record isn't complete for broad analysis. They note that marine life and bird-like dinosaurs are thriving. Could the dinosaurs have survived? Earth's fate might have been very different if the impact happened elsewhere. If it had fallen minutes later, the asteroid would have landed in much deeper water, vaporizing less rock to block the sun's light and warmth. This would have reduced extinction risks. Paul thinks we might have seen dinosaurs other than birds if an asteroid hadn't ended their reign. Some may still be around. What we know about their last 10 million years is based on Western North America. Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops are well documented. From that part of the world, dinosaurs appear to be thriving, but the number of species overall is declining. We don't know if this pattern holds true elsewhere. It's still a mystery. If not for the asteroid, dinosaurs might have survived longer. Still, as birds, mammals, and reptiles evolved, they may not have dominated as much. That's it for today. What do you think of the video? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this one, be sure to like it and hit that subscribe button before you go. Thank you for watching.